Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to interface 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit data mode with our microcontroller STM32F446RE. Let's get started. So, as the first step, let us try to understand the schematic circuit that we are going to build for interfacing 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit mode with our Nucleo F446RE development board. And here you can see on the screen the schematic diagram that I am going to build for interfacing this 16 cross 2 alphanumeric LCD display with the microcontroller STM32 F446RE in 8 bit mode. So, what is meant by 8 bit mode? So, you can clearly see there are 8 data lines in the LCD starting from D0 to D7. And if you are passing or utilizing all these 8 data lines for transferring and receiving, data or command to this LCD that method is named as 8-bit data mode and there are other modes such as 4-bit mode in which we will be using or utilizing only the data lines from D0 to D3 or the data lines D4 to D7 that is any 4 bits of data lines so in such case it is called as interfacing this LCD in 4-bit data mode but now we are just going to utilize all the 8 data lines of the LCD and so the method is named as 8-bit data mode in the LCD and this is the schematic diagram that we are going to build. This is the Nucleo F446RE development board schematic and these are all the pin nodes that I am going to utilize in the Nucleo F446RE microcontroller or the development board for interfacing the LCD. You can clearly see D0 is connected to PA10, D1 is connected to PB3, D2 is connected to PB5, D3 is connected to PB4, D4 is connected to PB10. D5 is connected to PA8, D6 is connected to PA9 and D7 is connected to PC7. And regarding the configuration pins RS, RW and Enable, I am just going to connect PP6 to RS, PA7 to RW and PA6 to Enable. That's all about the connection of the LCD to the microcontroller and other than that we are just going to use these pins for powering up the LCD. That is VC, VSS that is the first pin of the LCD will be connected to ground of the circuit. That is the ground of the development board and BDD will be connected to 3.3 volt pin of the development board and VE will be connected to 10 kilo ohms resistor like this. That is 10 kilo ohms variable resistor like this. So this VE is useful for varying the contrast of the font available in the LCD. And other than that, we will be having anode and cathode terminal. This one is the anode terminal and this one is the cathode terminal. 16th pin is the cathode terminal, 15th pin is the anode terminal. I will be connecting this anode terminal to the 3.3 volt supply of the nuclear development board through 1 kilo ohms resistor and if you want further brightness you can reduce the resistance value as required and cathode will be connected to ground of the circuit. So this is the schematic diagram that I am going to build for interfacing this LCD in 8 bit mode with the microcontroller STM32F446RE. So let us discuss in detail about the configuration part that is let us try to configure all these pins as outputs in the Cubemx software for interfacing the LCD. So let us try to configure all these pins as outputs that is the data lines from D0 to D7 and the pins such as RS, RW and Enable as VP about digital output pins for interfacing this LCD. And from the schematic diagram that we discussed just before, I have brought these data. You can clearly see these are the data lines of LCD starting from D0. We have D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. And on the right, you can clearly see the respective pin of the microcontroller to which the respective uh, data lines of the LCD is connected. That is D0 of the LCD is connected to PA10 and so and so. And enable line of the LCD is connected to PA6, RW is connected to PA7 and RS line of the LCD is connected to PB6. So these are the pinout diagram of the LCD uh, to which the microcon. So these are the pin details of the LCD to which the. So these are the circuit connections of LCD to GPIO of the microcontroller in a theoretical way. So as the first step, what we want to do is. I am just going to create new project in Keel Microvision IDE. Now I am just opening the Keel Microvision IDE. 
so here once the id is open just click on the project tab and click on new microvision project for creating your new project and move to the respective folder where you want to store your project in your local and provide a name for your project right over here in the file name tab and then click on save and in the next consequent tab that is popping out you just want to select the microcontroller that you are working on so in our case the microcontroller is stm32f446re just type in the microcontroller name i am just typing in like stm32f446 in this search box and here you can see you are getting the microcontroller that you typed in the search box just click on the plus icon near the microcontroller and here our microcontroller series is stm32f446re just click the plus near uh, the stm32f446re and select the microcontroller right over here inside that tab and then click on ok and in the next manage runtime environment tab right over here you just want to select the cmsys driver and the startup code required for the microcontroller so just click on plus icon near the cmsys right over here and check this core right over here and after selecting this click on the plus near the device and then click on the checkbox near startup for generating the startup files required for uh, the stm32 f446re microcontroller and then click on ok you can see the project has been created right over here in the project plane just click on the plus near the target for revealing all the project files and then right click on the source group and click on add new items to group source group 1 and here i just want to create my main.c file required for the project so click on the .c format right over here and provide a name for your file that you are creating in the name search box right over here so i am just typing the name of the file that needs to be created to be main.c just type in main since we have already selected the extension to be .c and then click on add button right over here for adding the main.c file to your project click on the plus near the source group one you can clearly see the main.c file has been created to your project and as a first step we are just going to create or write down our main function so i am writing like int main of void so this is the main function which will be containing the logical part of the program which needs to be executed in our microcontroller and inside the main i am just going to create the while of one which is the infinite loop of the program so this while of one is nothing but a never ending loop or infinite loop or super loop whatever you call it this is an infinite loop which will be containing the logical part of the program which needs to be executed again and again until the microcontroller is stopped and the portion of the program just before the while of one inside the main function will contain the configuration lines of the program which needs to be executed only once in the lifetime of the program initially so there are two segments of an embedded program one is the configuration segment and another one is the infinite segment so in configuration segment before the while of one we will be writing down the configuration lines such as for example configuring a port configuring timers configuring uh, communication protocols etc uh, just before the while of one and uh, another segment is nothing but the logical segment which needs to be executed again and again until the microcontroller is stopped so that part of the segment or that part of the program we will be writing down inside the while of one which is the infinite loop of the program that's all about the main function creation and now i'm just going to add the header file required for the project so has include of stm32f 
फोर एक्स एक्स डॉट एच सो वी कैन इधर यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉमन हेड ऑफ फाइल एस टी एम थर्टी टू एफ फोर एक्स एक्स डॉट एच और यू कैन यूज अनदर हेड ऑफ फाइल अवेलेबल विच इज पर्टिकुलरली मेन फॉर दिस एस टी एम थर्टी टू एफ डबल फोर सिक्स एक्स एक्स डॉट एच विच इज पर्टिकुलरली मेन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर एस टी एम थर्टी टू एफ डबल फोर सिक्स आर ई माइक्रो कंट्रोलर और एनी अदर एस टी एम थर्टी टू एफ डबल फोर सिक्स सीरीज माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर हेड ऑफ फाइल विच इज अवेलेबल स्पेसिफिकली फॉर दिस माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एंड दट्स एट अबाउट द इनिशियल कॉन्फिग्रेशन नीड्स टू बी डन इन कील माइक्रोवेशन आई so once you are done with the main dot c source file creation and all the main function creation right over here uh, i just want to do some basic configurations required for interfacing the board to our microcontroller that is the nuclear board or any other custom made stm32 microcontroller based board to your pc just click on the options for target icon right over here and click on output tab in this particular window shown right over here and check this create hex file check box that's it now click on okay save the configuration and now let us start writing our logical part of the program as per our requirement so now the project has been created in keel microvision id for stm32 f4 6re microcontroller and the main function has been uh, written in the main.c file now as the first step what we are going to do is we are just going to go through a previous program that we wrote or that we developed for interfacing seven segment display with our microcontroller stm32 f4r6re that is with the same nucleo f4r6re development board so let me just open that program so this is the program that we developed for interfacing or this is the drivers that we developed for interfacing seven segment display common cathode seven segment display with our uh, stm32 f4r6re microcontroller with nucleo f4r6re development board so what we are going to do is we are just going to reuse the functions that we wrote right over here that is this particular function print data which we wrote step by step in that lecture we are just going to reuse this particular function which is useful for converting byte of data into individual bits and based on the individual bit status starting from bit number 0 to bit number 7 based on individual bit status whether it is 1 or 0 we will it will be turning on a particular pin or turning off the particular pin if the particular bit value for example if the bit 0 is having the value 1 it will turn on the pin representing the bit 0 and if the bit 0 is having the value 0 it will turn off the same pin which is representing the bit 0 so this is what this function does so we are just going to reuse this particular function if you want a clear cut explanation step by step how this function is written just go back to the lecture of interfacing seven segment displays with our uh, stm32 f446re microcontroller there i have written this function step by step each and every line and also i will be utilizing this particular delay function loop delay function i'm just copying these two functions and i'm going to paste it just before the main function in my program and also i will be copying the configuration part right over here so let me just copy this and i will paste it just before the while of one so now we have copied some piece of code from the lecture of interfacing seven segment display with our microcontroller to this video to this project so what we will do is from here on we will be developing the drivers required for printing some data to the 16 cross 2 lcd in 8 bit mode so let me just open the schematic details so here you can clearly see all the pin details of the microcontroller which is connected to lcd 
so it contains port a port b port c so as the first step what we want to do is we just want to enable the clock of gpio a gpio b gpio c etc so you can clearly see in this step the clock of gpios are enabled for gpio a b and c so this is already done in that video itself so i am just going to utilize this line as it is i am not going to alter it and the other important thing or the next step that we want to do is we just want to make all the pins connected to lcd as output in microcontroller so pa10 pb3 pb5 and so on all these pins must be made as output since we utilized this particular function from the previous video all these data lines of the lcd will be made output right over here you can clearly see pa10 is the pin to which the a terminal of the seven segment was connected but here you can clearly see pa10 is connected to d0 so let me just copy this and let me just paste it right over here so pa10 is connected to d0 pb3 is connected to d1 pb5 is connected to d2 pb4 is connected to d3 pb10 is connected to d4 pa8 is connected to d5 pa9 is connected to d6 and uh, pc7 is connected to d7 you can clearly see pc7 is connected to d7 so all these pins must be made as output so clearly see pa10 8 and 9 was made output with the help of these two lines and pb3 4 5 and 10 is made as output with the help of these two lines and pc7 is made as output with the help of this particular these two lines pin line number 49 and 50 and additionally we just want to make these three pins as output pa6 7 and pb6 which is enable rs rw which was not available in seven segment but this is available in lcd so additionally we want to do this so our motto is to configure pa6 pa7 and pb6 as additional output pins in our microcontroller so let me just open the user manual of the microcontroller so this is the mode r register which is useful for setting the configuration for gpo pin in the microcontroller whether as output input or analog pin so the pin that needs to be configured for so the pin that needs to be configured as output is pa6 pa7 from port a so we will be utilizing the same pointer gpo a for these two pins pa6 and pa7 so here you can clearly see in this register two bits are useful for configuring one particular pin 011 is useful for configuring pin number 0 in the port 213 is useful for configuring pin number 1 in the port and it's and so on this is a 32 bit wide register starting from 0 it is having bit still 31 so this 30 and 31 is useful for configuring the pin number 15 in the port so in our case i just want to configure pin number 6 from gpoa so i will be utilizing 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 these two bits that is bit number 12 and 13 of the register so you can clearly see the data that i want to write to these two bits are 0 1 so 0 1 means general purpose output mode so i just want to write 1 to 12th bit and 0 to 13th bit for making the pa6 pin as output pin 
in the same manner for configuring the PA7 as output I just want to use these two bits 14 and 15 of the same register with the rip of same pointer GPOA for configuring the PA7 as output that is I will be setting bit number 14 and I will be clearing bit number 15 for making the PA7 as output pin general purpose output pin so let me just copy these two bit number 12 and 14 needs to be set and bit number 13 and bit number 15 needs to be clear so these two lines are useful for setting pa7 and pa6 as output pins and additionally we just want pb6 to be configured as output so for configuring pb6 you can use the same configuration that is let me just copy this pb6 i just want to set bit number 12 and i want to clear bit number 13 so that pb6 will be configured as output if i use gpo b pointer let me just compile and check once whether it is compiling as the program is compiled with 0s and 0 warnings so the configuration segment is completed you can clearly see all the pins from the microcontroller which is connected to the lcd terminals that is data lines from D0 to D7 and uh, configuration lines enable RS and RW are made as output pins. And the respective clocks for all the pins available in the port A, B and C are enabled. So that's all about the configuration segments. Now let us try to start writing our LCD driver development part. Now let us try to develop our own drivers for printing some data onto the 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit mode, 8 bit data mode. So now that the configuration segment has been completed, we have configured all the pins from the microcontroller to which the LCD terminals are connected as output pins and we have enabled the clock for all the GPU ports of the uh, pins used. So as the next step, we are just going to develop our own drivers for printing some data onto the 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit data mode. So let's start writing that. Addition to all these functions available, delay and print data, we are just going to develop few other functions which is useful for driving the LCD and also for passing instruction to LCD and also for passing data to LCD and combinedly we will be building a function for passing a string of data to LCD. So let's start writing our driver for LCD in 8 bit mode. So the first and foremost function that we are going to write is void lcd data and this receives a parameter let's take it to be named as data so this particular function is useful for passing data to data register of LCD that is for printing data to LCD so here what we will do is we will just derive some steps for performing the action that is for printing some data to the LCD there are few steps to be followed that we will be deriving right over here and later we will just try to implement that in the coding part. 
so the first step that we want to do is we just want to pass the 8 bit data to data lines of LCD and the next step that we want to do is we just want to drive RW line of LCD to be low for writing some data to the LCD we just want to make the RW line low and as the next step we just want to drive RS line of LCD to be high for writing the data to the data lines of LCD we just want to make the RS pin of the data line to be high and then we just want to drive enable line of LCD to be high for enabling the clock of the LCD and after enabling we will provide a rough uh, loop delay of uh, 2 to 5 milliseconds and uh, finally we will be making the EN line of LCD to be low that's it so this is the procedure which needs to be followed for passing the data to the data register of LCD so when you perform all these actions step by step the data that you are passing to the data lines of LCD will be directly printed on the LCD that is for example uh, when I write like LCD data of character small a the character small a will be printed onto the LCD and the next function that we are going to build is the LCD command function let's take the parameter passed to this function to be command so this particular function right over here is useful for passing data to the instruction register of LCD so whatever that you are passing as a parameter to this function will be taken as a instruction or command to the LCD so this will be pass it to the instruction register of LCD so this will pass commands to LCD that is for example we just want to move the cursor to a particular location we will utilize this particular command uh, function for doing that and the next function that we are going to write is we are just going to write lcd string function and this will receive two parameters one is the string array and another one is the length of the string array passed so i forgot one thing that is uh, for passing the command to the lcd we just want to make the rs pin low this is the only difference between these two when you make RS pin high with the same procedure, the data will be passed to the data register of LCD and when you make RS pin low, the data will be passed to the instruction register of LCD. That's it. So if you take this string function, we will be utilizing LCD data function in loop for printing string or word of data to LCD so this particular function is useful for printing word of uh, data to LCD Another function that we are going to build is LCD initialize and this function doesn't receive any parameter we will be just calling this function for 
initializing the LCD at first instance. So in this particular function we will be passing several commands for initializing the LCD as per the configuration done. So these are all the functions that we will be writing for driving the LCD and also for printing some data onto the 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit data mode. So let me just copy everything onto my Keel Microvision IDE and I will paste it just below this print data. So now let us try to implement each step written right over here. So as the first step in this LCD data function, we just want to pass the 8 bit data to the data lines of LCD. So for that we will be utilizing this particular print data function. So call this function right over here and this is the parameter called data. So I am passing this particular parameter to the print data function. And as I said, and as the next step, we are just going to drive the RW pin to be low. So RW pin is nothing but PA7. So for driving it low, I will be utilizing ODR register of GPAOA. So this ODR register pointing to bit number 7 of the GPIO port. So GPIOA is equal to GPIOA ambition of negation of 1 left shifted by 7. So GPIOA pointing to ODR is equal to GPIOA pointing to ODR ambition of negation of 1 left shifted by 7. So we have successfully turned off the RW line. And the next step is we just want to make the RS pin high. RS pin is nothing but PB6. So what I will do here is GPAOB pointing to ODR is equal to GPAOB pointing to ODR R of 1 left shifted by 6. So we have made the PB6 to be high. The next step is we just want to enable the enable line of LCD. That is make high the enable line of LCD. Enable line is PA6. So I am copying this. A, A. And here we will be providing a delay. Let's take the delay to be. 50,000 right over here. It is just a rough loop delay. If it doesn't work, just increase the value of the delay function so that you will get the output. Uh, it will make some delay if you increase the value, that's it. But uh, nothing will affect the functionality of LCD. Don't bother about the value written right over here. Just uh, alter this value to get the required output. I make it, I'm making it to be 8,000. Now as the next step, I just want to drive the enable pin to be low. So let me just copy this and paste it. Ambition of That's it. That's all about the LCD data function right over here. We have successfully written the programming code for implementing LCD data for printing some data onto the LCD. And the next function is LCD command function. Let me just write down each and every step right over here, similar to LCD data. I just want to pass the command right over here for the first step. And for the next step, I just want to disable the RW line. And as the next step, I just want to disable the RS line for passing the data to the instruction register. So I'm just clearing this bit.
and as the next step i just want to make the enable pin high and uh, as the next step i just want to provide the delay for the enable pin and finally i just want to clear the enable pin so our enable line is pa6 6 rw is pa7 rw is pa7 and rs is pb6 pb6 that's it make sure in your connection if the pin varies just alter the code as per your schematic diagram so that the program works fine and coming to the lcd string uh, function here what we will do is we will just uh, declare a variable called i and we will initialize it to 0 and here i am just going to write a for loop for i is equal to 0 i less than i less than length which is passed as second parameter to this function and inside this loop i am just going to call the lcd data function and i am going to pass the str buffer of i so let's take an example for understanding this for example if i am calling this function like this lcd string of a b c comma 3 so this is the string that we are passing as a string to this function and this is the length of the string you can see 1 2 and 3 so what happens here is for the first time when the loop is reached the i value will be 0 and i value less than 3 is true so lc data of string of 0 will be printed so string of 0 is nothing but a so a will be printed so again the condition is checked again the i value is incremented to 1 and the condition is checked now 1 less than 3 is uh, 2 again so lc data of str of 1 is printed str of 1 is nothing but b again the i value is incremented to 2 and again the condition is checked so 2 less than 3 is true so lc data of str of uh, 2 is printed that is nothing but c will be printed and the i value is incremented to 3 now you can see 3 less than 3 is false so the loop will be skipped so in, so in this manner this function will be helpful for uh, printing a string of data to the lcd And for initializing the LCD, we are just going to utilize the LCD command function and we are going to pass four different commands. LC data of 0x38, LCD command of 0x38, LCD command of 0x06, LCD command of 0x zero c lcd command of zero x zero one so there are various commands that you can try just google 16 cross to lcd commands and uh, you can demonstrate all the commands that is available in the list that is available in the google there are various commands but these are mandatory commands for configuring the lcd basically so 0x38 means we are configuring lcd in 16 rows and sorry 16 column and 2 row format display on cursor of auto increment so 0x06 means display on cursor off if you want to turn on the cursor and see the cursor blinking you, there is a different command so you can utilize that i think it is 0x0e or something and 0x0c means auto 
increment cursor when a current column is printed and 0 0 me 0 0 1 means clear screen so that's it that's all about the initial configuration that needs to be done for the lcd i'm just going to call this function in the beginning of the lcd in the beginning part of the program that is just before the while of one so i'm calling this lcd initialize right over here just before the while of one and coming inside the while of one what i will do is i will just so after the initialization function is called coming inside the logical part of the program that is inside the while of one the first and foremost command that i am going to provide for lcd is move the cursor to first row first column that is 0x80 and after moving the cursor i am just going to print the string embedded which is having a total characters of eight numbers you can see one two three four five six seven eight and then i am just going to provide the command for moving the cursor to second row first column that is 0xc0 and i am going to print the string systems which is having a total length of seven characters if you are having this uh, warning you can just remove this unsigned right over here the parameter of lcd string and save the document you can see the warning will be removed so now here what happens is the embedded will be printed in the first row first column of the lcd and uh, from the second row first column of the lcd the systems will be printed so this is the expected output from this program let me just compile this program for compiling you can just click on this icon or f7 in your keyboard you can see zero errors and zero warnings now for uh, selecting the nuclear board connected just click on the options for target and click on debug tab and here in the drop down select the st link debugger and click on settings button you can see if the nucleo is properly connected and drive was installed it will be showing this id of the board connected to your pc if you see that just click on the okay before that just click on the download to flash checkbox right over here and click on okay and here also you can just click on okay now for downloading the flash to the nuclear development board or to your microcontroller just click on f8 in your keyboard or this particular icon right over here since i have already connected the nuclear development board to my pc i am just downloading the flash the flash has been successfully downloaded that is the program has been successfully dumped to the microcontroller stm32 f446re available in my nucleo f446re development board and now let's build the schematic in the breadboard by connecting the lcd in 8 bit data mode to your nucleo f446re development board and then we will visualize the output in the hardware so you can see this is the 16 cross 2 alphanumeric display that is the LCD display and I am going to make the connection between this display and my STM32 F246RE microcontroller that is this nuclear development board and I have already connected the potentiometer to the VEE pin of this LCD for varying the contrast and also I have connected a 220 ohms resistor to the VCC pin for the anode pin of this LCD and then I have grounded this cathode pin so the backlight of the LED will be turned down as soon as I power up this LCD from this development port and regarding the same VDD and VSS I have connected the VSS to the ground line right over here and VDD I have connected it to the supply line so I will be sourcing this LCD directly from the 5 volt signal from this nuclear development port you can clearly see I have connected 
these two lines that is this brown jumper you can see I have connected these two lines that is this brown jumper is the positive rail and this black jumper is the negative rail I have connected that brown right over here which is the 5 volt of this nuclear development board and I have connected the black to the ground of the development board so I am directly powering the LCD display from the nuclear development board and let's start connecting the data lines of this LCD so from the fourth pin that is from this brown jumper I am having the data lines so I am just removing all the other jumpers this one is a D0 so I am just going to connect this D0 to the PA10 of the nuclear development board that is pin number 3 from the bottom right over here in the bulk connector and regarding the D1 I am just going to connect it to PB3 as per the circuit diagram as per the circuit diagram just before I showed to you and the third pin that is D2 I am just going to connect it to PB5 as per the circuit diagram that I have shown to you and D3 I am just going to connect it to PB4 sorry this one is D3 the grey wire is D3 so I am just taking it and I am connecting it and D4 I am just connecting it to PB10 D5 I am just connecting it to PA8 D6 I am connecting it to PA9 and finally D7 I am just connecting it to PC7 and regarding the RS, RW and enable you can clearly see these three pins red, black, red and brown are RS, RW and enable I am just going to connect the RS to PB6 RW to PA7 and finally the enable pin I am just connecting it to PA6 so I have built the circuit in a manner that I don't want any other shuffling connections in my nuclear development board so I have used the single straight burp connector right over here so starting from D0 it goes on till D7 and then after that I have connected RS, RW and enable. And finally you can see this is the output which I got in the hardware. The string embedded systems has been successfully printed on the 16 cross 2 alpha numeric LCD via STM32F446RE microcontroller. So if you are not getting the font clearly visible, just use this potentiometer right over here which has been connected to VEE for adjusting the contrast of the font available in the LCD. So you can clearly see the font has been disappeared and when I slightly move the contrast of the font will be increasing. You can see it is visible and when I move the knob towards the other extreme end. I am getting the maximum contrast in, in the 16 cross 2 LCD. So we have successfully interfaced 16 cross 2 alphanumeric LCD with our STM32F446RE microcontroller. So I hope in this video you learnt some basic techniques for interfacing. 16 cross 2 LCD in 8 bit data mode with our uh, Nucleo F446RE development board with the help of STM32 F446RE microcontroller available in it. 
see you in the next video thanks for watching